Hi, this is Pat Tolbert, a nurse practitioner with the Palliative Medicine team at Grant Medical Center. In this presentation, I will be talking about advanced directives and advanced care planning. Michelle Jackson and I have compiled information to educate you about the most effective options available to communicate your healthcare wishes to your healthcare team. Advanced directives are sometimes called advanced care planning. These are overlapping terms and they share the same message. I've bullet pointed some of the most important things for you to know about the documents. They are legal documents. They are specific to the state of Ohio. The documents need to be notarized or witnessed, but they do not require an attorney. These documents are becoming more significant as society moves away from traditional relationships. Most important, once completed, share them with your primary care physician, nurse practitioner, or to your inpatient care team. Once imaged into your medical record, they become part of your medical chart. The key word on this slide is planning. A majority of patients in the hospital on any given day did not plan to be hospitalized on that day, or maybe any other day. As a patient with a chronic illness, you may be more susceptible to emergency room visits or hospitalizations than the general public. However, anyone can suffer an injury or an acute illness and become hospitalized, nearly always unplanned. Why is having advanced directives important? There are a variety of scenarios where you may end up hospitalized and unable to voice your own wishes for or against a procedure, a surgery, a test, or other interventions like infusions and transfusions. In the event you are unable to speak for yourself, your medical team will look for an advanced directive. Naming the person you'd like them to speak to, or in the absence of a directive, your legal next of kin. Our society is moving away from traditional relationships and families are often no longer intact. Your first legal next of kin is your spouse, then an adult child, then a parent, then a sibling, and so on until we find a closest blood relative. If you are married but estranged, never got around to getting a divorce, that separated spouse may be your legal next of kin. If you are in a relationship but never got married, which is becoming very common, that person will not be considered a decision maker for you as they have no legal relationship to you. If your parents are alive but perhaps divorced or estranged, they would both be required to agree to decisions for you. Generally, these rules are not strictly enforced for more routine medical issues. However, for life-sustaining, life-prolonging measures, this policy is enforced. Having said all that, advanced planning, identifying who will be your voice is important. The healthcare power of attorney allows you to decide who can and should make decisions for you if you are unable. They can have access to your health information. The healthcare power of attorney is not for financial purposes, only for healthcare. The person, does not need to be related to you. They must be available, so update phone numbers, and ideally is someone you feel comfortable talking with about your personal health. Not being able to speak for yourself is different than being deemed incompetent. Incompetent is a legal term, not a healthcare term. You may be unable to speak for yourself for a variety of reasons. Maybe you are on life support or have been sedated due to a neurological issue or a surgery. Possibly you suffered head trauma and have a concussion or a brain injury. Your healthcare power of attorney can work with the healthcare team. However, when you become awake and alert and are able to speak for yourself, you will then resume making your own medical decisions. The living will is different than a healthcare power of attorney. The living will is specific to being in a terminal condition. You are not going to get better. Your healthcare team cannot make you better. This document gives your healthcare team the permission to make you comfortable and to inform your family of your condition and your wishes. While this sounds difficult, 
most people would not choose to be maintained on machines with no opportunity to recover meaningful function. Families are often grateful and relieved to know they do not have to make a decision for you, that you have made your own decision specific to this circumstance. If you have both a living will and a healthcare power attorney, and you are in a terminal condition, the living will becomes the prevailing document. Small but distinct differences in the two documents, the healthcare power attorney and the living will. The healthcare power attorney is informing your person of choice, your wishes, and they are responsible to voice your wishes to the healthcare team. The living will is informing your healthcare team directly, and the living will becomes your voice if in a terminal condition. The Ohio DNR, Do Not Resuscitate form, allows you to choose two different options. There is a wealth of information associated with this form. It is considered part of advanced directives and advanced care planning. Further education will be provided in a separate session, and I encourage you to review this. Be an informed healthcare consumer. Thank you for reviewing this information. I hope you take away some valuable and helpful information. Please feel free to share this with your family and friends. It is never too soon to plan in advance. Michelle and I have posted our numbers above and would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you.